Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. By now, I'm sure we've all seen Duchess Meghan looking stunning in that red Carolina Herrera dress. Duchess Meghan showed up to support the Children's Hospital LA. On Saturday, the Duchess of Sussex made a surprise appearance at the Children's Hospital LA 2024 gala, where she stunned in that Carolina Herrera gown. The gala honors the hospital's patients, physicians, researchers, and caregivers, as well as recognizes philanthropists who support the work that's done at the hospital. While on the red carpet, Megan spoke about why she's grateful for the work that the hospital does. Megan was spotted chatting with the hospital's CEO, her bestie Kelly, and of course, the Nelson family. How adorable is this photo of Megan and Ellie Nelson? Other celebrities in attendance included Jamie Lee Curtis, Kaylee Coco, Demi Lovato, Jimmy Kimmel, and Colin Hanks, just to name a few. Now, of course, Megan's Carolina Herrera gown is a rework of the gown that we've seen her wear before. One of the funniest moments was the wow of, of the unknown lady in the background. Hi Megan. Hi Megan, right there. Wow. Wow indeed. Now it should come as no surprise to see the Duchess supporting the hospital. We've seen her do just that before, reading to the sick children and some of their family members earlier this year. It's just wonderful to see her in her chapter of joy, smiling with her close friend, supporting these wonderful families and children. And of course, seeing her spotted with Ashley. Recently, we spoke about Ashley starting her new form and of course, continuing to work with the Sussexes. Chapter of joy. I love that for her. Okay, let's talk about Harry and Meghan for a minute. Okay, we all inherited patterns from our family and it's like a relay race where the generations are passing down their unfinished material to us and we have the opportunity to either repeat the pattern or break the pattern. And for all of you who are the pattern breakers, you know that even though you're doing the right thing for you, everyone is not excited that you did that. They're actually really confronted by the fact that you're breaking the pattern. And Harry very publicly, like we all know, um, his father was not able to stand up to his family and say, no, I, I will not marry someone I don't love. I'm going to marry the person that I love and you cannot force me to be who you want me to be. And, that's, and he totally caved and he married someone he did not love at all. And it turned into a gigantic mess. So Harry broke the pattern. You know, he met Megan who much like Diana was really had no preparation for what she was about to sign on to though kind of more cause she was older and had more of a sense of self and career and goals and values and like identity. So like she's in a better position um, than Diana was certainly, but nonetheless, she had no idea what she's signing up for just the way like none of us would really understand us being Americans would really understand what we're signing up to going into a different country and culture and like all that goes along with that, you know, so he inherited this pattern of, will I choose my family or will I choose the person that I love? And he chose the person that he loves, Megan. And every single time he was at another crossroads of, will I choose my family or the, the woman that I love? He chose her. And he kept doubling down on choosing her and choosing her and choosing her until the point that he gave up his role and title and moved to a different country to protect her from his family and their expectations and also the media. So that's how it is with patterns. You know, we don't just choose once to do things differently. We have to keep re-choosing the new way that we want our life to be. And he has done it and it really confronts people. It confronts people with their internalized misogyny. Like who has a partner that has chosen them that deeply? I know some of you do, but you know what I mean? Like in general, that's not a lot of what women experience. How many times are women in situations where men will not back them up? Men will sit there and say, hey, I love you. I'm, I want to be with you, but they won't really like show up. The program is that women would abandon themselves and adjust themselves to make things comfortable for their man and their man's family and their own family as well. And both of them are turning the whole thing on its head and she's neither adjusting nor abandoning herself and he isn't either. And so it's breaking a ton of patterns and everyone with all their internalized patriarchy and sexism and for sure racism 
are just have their panties in a bunch about it. And so I just think it's awesome. I think this is a map, you know, for all of us, you know, all my posts where I'm always saying you have to learn how to tolerate the pushback, tolerate the tension that happens when you do what's right for you, when it's not what other people want you to do. Like this is like a super extreme like example. They're dealing with like global pushback. But this is what we all deal with in our families and in our social groups and the communities we're involved with. And we do what's right for us. And it is not what other people want and it is not what they have done and it confronts them on really deeply baked in assumptions about how the world works and you're cutting through all that and following your own truth people freak out and i think that is at least one part of what's going on here She's back, not that she ever went away. British digital media, please take note. She's looking fantastic. Megan is back in the spotlight and it's great to see her in a fabulous dress with little makeup looking absolutely radiant. I can 100% see everything and more that Harry saw in her when they decided to get married. She's at a charity event using her media power to shine a light on all the things that we should be talking about, including children's hospitalization, medical care, and of course, hospice for those that need end of life care. This is what the British taxpayer funded working royal family, sorry, that sentence keeps getting longer, should be doing. They should be out there engaging with people and showing that they, Megan, knows she's not the most important person in the room. It's not all about her, but she is using her fame and the pull of the media that she can get to shine a light on the issues that we should be talking about. Pew. Knockout, know the word for it. Megan's former co-star recently did an interview and here's what he had to say. This is the scene where we meet one of our most important main characters, Rachel Zane, comes up behind Mike and introduces herself and uh, we get to see the beginning of that relationship. Which... Before we dive into that scene, yeah. when did you meet Megan? Oh, so... Megan and I had done a pilot before, a terrible, terrible pilot together. I won't even say the name of it, but you can IMDb it. It was, it, there was a setting up of a romantic relationship in the pilot of that particular pilot too. And then we never saw each other again. The pilot failed, it was terrible and went away. And so we had never seen each other nor spoken to each other again. And then I saw her at the call, but we, I was in there because I was the first to be cast for this show. And so when I went in to do the chemistry reads with Rachel, she was right there and she said, hi. And I went, oh my God, so good to see you. And so I think our just knowing each other and getting to like calm down and not have those nerves of just getting to know one another really helped that chemistry read. And it was just clear that we had a, an easygoing thing when we went into that room. And it was pretty clear, if I remember correctly, that she was going to get the part from the minute we did the chemistry read. It was just so much easier than it was with anybody else. Was the scene this scene? It was this scene and the next one where she walks Mike through the whole office. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's a bear of an audition scene. It's a big one. And she yeah, crushed it. She, she crushed it and she crushes it in the show. So here we meet them. One of my favorite lines in, in the show, maybe in the whole series, I love you whispered <laughs> as she walks away. That is a very popular meme, right? I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in general, I just love that scene. I think it's a really strong beginning for her character. I just love her, like, what is her first line? I forget what she she's says. Like, it, but she's like, hit on me. I just think it really, like, gives her some ownership of the space. So it's a good beginning of that relationship. Someone on Reddit had asked, is it weird now that your co-star is now royalty? Are you still in touch? And to that, he responded, we're not really in touch. She leads a very different life now for obvious and important reasons. Upon hearing about the podcast, I got a lovely text saying how excited she was for us and asking how she could help in any way. It's so lovely to still have that kind of support and friendship after so many years apart. So for all the inquiring minds, there you have it. It's just been really fantastic to see Harry and Megan continuing to live their best lives. I will admit there was a point where sometimes I would have to take a break from consuming social media about anything concerning Harry and Megan because I felt so overwhelmed and so sad to see the torrent of never-ending abuse from the press and from royal fans online. It, it was just too much to bear and I had to take a break. 
then coming back on, I found uh, Royal Sussex Channel and I enjoyed seeing someone with positive and nuanced conversations about the pair. And it's because of Baron that I ultimately started this channel to lend my voice in a positive way. And in most things, you just realize that it's up to us to choose what we consume and what we give our energies to and how important it is to recognize when it's time to leave the nonsense and negativity aside. You can't dwell on it, much like what Harry and Meghan has been doing. And I love seeing them in this new chapter. Seeing the love and the comments from so many of the different articles and videos of Meghan this weekend has been very encouraging to see. We are witnessing the decline of the royal family in real time. This is from June. This is when William, Prince William showed up to an event and nobody showed up, right? What's happened is since the death of the queen, the queen was a worker bee. She understood it was about service. She understood to justify a mon monarchy, we have to show why we're important, why they need us. And she made, she worked and she made everybody work. Everybody had these charities that they were there for and they had 30 or 40 or 50, they had a job. Everybody had a job and everybody stayed busy with these various charities. So what happened was when Harry, it all goes back to Harry, when, when Harry was forced out because he wanted to be half in and half out, right? But he was forced out due to jealousy, right? He is now a regular, he's a citizen. He doesn't have to, he's not, a, he's not in the line of, the, of royalty. She doesn't have to do all those charities. He could just do the charities he wants to do. He could just have, do for him and his family. And so I believe from that, you know, William was so competitive that previously he was competitive with, with Harry when Harry would do would, would do things for his charities and William was doing things for his charities. So when William, when Harry left the royal family, so William is still in competition. So if he doesn't see Harry doing a lot of engagements, he's not going to be doing a lot of engagements. But it's different for Harry because he's now, he's not depending on the royal family to support him. William, the, the people of the of UK are spending half a billion dollars a year to support this family. They're paying you to actually go out and do e events and, and charities and to be there and to be a, a representation of the country, but you're doing absolutely nothing. And because you're not doing any charities, you're not extending uh, goodwill towards others to the point that they don't know you, they don't show up for you anymore because you don't really show up for them, they don't really show up for you. So you see what's happening? This is after a couple of years of the passing of the queen. In about five to 10 years, it, it's gonna make no sense to have a royal family until William wakes up, stop trying to follow his brother. He will never be as charismatic as, charismatic as his brother and that's okay. But what he can do is be consistent and show up. And he needs to be doing about two to three hundred. Yes, I said it. Two to three hundred engagements a year for him to build the love of the people, the well wishes of the goodwill of the people. So they show up for him. What he needs to be doing as the next king, man, he is not doing it. Releasing videos and he does a couple of engagements a month. No, he needs to be doing a lot more engagements a month. Five days a week, he should be at an engagement. It's like a job. It should be like a job because she's not royalty because he was born to it. What queen, the queen, what she set up is your royalty because of your service. So now it's looking like the next king is Harry and he is a spare. God, what a horrible thing to say. I'm just so sad. I agree. The word spare just seems incredibly sad to me but so much about that family and that environment also seems really sad and cold and calculating it's no wonder someone like megan or diana or harry would have problems within such an institution where egos run amok unchecked simply because of the hereditary placement and with that i'll bid you guys adieu Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.